So today on the bench, I have these LED strips. This really, really neat. They're flexible and they can um, kind of mimic um, neon lights. So I've been actually waiting for this for a while to be able to get my hands on some of these uh, LED strips that you can bend easy. Um, I bought some that I thought you could and they wasn't quite what I was expecting. But these three right here have been great uh, to experiment with and they take 12 volts, which is easy. About an amp, amp and a quarter each. I think this one's about 1.4. We'll look at that a little closer. I want a video camera that I can adjust my contrast a little better on. This one here, when I hook it up, it'll just wash out the camera. I'll, uh, but I'll try to put some, some footage up here with my Google Pixel 4, which actually ended up being the best video um, of the light because I could I could bring it down and be a lot darker and show the LEDs even uh, more than I can see it with my eye. And I could uh, brighten it up where it would saturate kind of like this and in between. So I'm going to try to have some uh, video up if all works out. But a little bit better image of how well it lights up and how closely it can resemble neon. Uh, nothing's quite as pretty as neon to me because I've always thought neon was really, really neat. But I am excited about being able to do this and to be able to build it easily and with just 12 volts. So I've actually started bending some metal. I just want to test it out. Maybe even tie wrap it for temporary measure for checking and just see if we can make, um, see if we can make it make out a word or so. So let's get to it. So back now, I just real quickly bent out some some shapes here out of uh, just clothes hanger wire for testing and the word i chose to make because with the covid 19 and all it's been going on the last month or two is we talk about faith over fear so i thought my wife might enjoy this one if i make it say faith so i actually did not have enough on my my previously bought uh strips to make the word completely out so i did purchase twice as much length of the blue now this blue one looks a little bit different and honestly i don't like this blue from this seller as much as i like this one i really like this one a lot it even looks at least from this angle even kind of looks like neon tube i really don't like the color of this one as much and it's got a hard cap instead of the soft cap and the wiring instead of silicone seems to be more like the thermoplastic insulation that this one don't quite glow an even neon glow like these do to me one of my favorites is the red and then the blue as far as just how well it uh, it glows like neon but the the blue is probably my favorite color to use so my first thought is just to use uh some heat shrink i got some three-quarter heat shrink i'm just gonna uh, cover up the spots I want black that I don't want to be lit up. We'll just see how it works. I still need to get a few tie wraps. I run out of the clear ones. I bought these clear ones because they was going to work great with this color. And then this one come in blue. But at least it does okay when you cut the light on. Let's cut the light off first. The bench light. We'll cut the power supply on. At least we get to see the effect of it. I got to work on some of the letters, obviously. We can make that look a lot more like a T. Straighten up the H with a couple more tie wraps. But I still have my room light on in here. I just, I don't have it dark enough to really see it glow. That's a little bit better. The camera may not do that justice. Let me get a little bit uh, better, hopefully a little bit better exposure with another camera here. This blue really does look fantastic. Uh, neither camera actually do the justice of the pretty blue. It still almost looks like white on both, uh, on both cameras and not much I can do about that. I was hoping you could at least see how, how good it looked neon style. But I definitely got to perfect this before I would hang it up. And I'm even wondering, Lexan, just drill the holes will be better. And maybe I should have started off with pegboard, honestly. And just zip tie through the holes instead of, even though the wire only took maybe 10 minutes, maybe maybe 15 minutes to bend out the try it, the, uh, the cheap wire may not have been the best idea. And one thing we can do to combat, you know, having to turn, if we're not doing cursive writing, right, is... Um, we can actually cut the length and just make straight pieces. And then we can just bring up thin wires and connect our 12 volts, right? And just have them all in parallel, which would be neat. But if you can see that, we do have lines about an inch apart. 
and just for testing because I didn't want to actually cut my long blue one that I was working with just for preliminary stuff I didn't actually want to cut it but if we see there we cut that length and it's just fine so I think all we'd have to do is just solder back on there so just for testing purposes so there you go so that is pretty neat you could just cut the piece you need pretty neat possibilities there And that is exactly what we have. It does show the little scissor cuts there. Right across the pads where you can solder on it every inch. Kind of a silicone diffuser there. That has a really, really nice glow to it. So that's why you can bend it so well. Especially in between the three LED sections. So 151 is 150 ohm resistor and three LED chips on every section. So we're roughly one inch apart. More specifically, it's probably 25 millimeter apart. So one of the tips on these is when you go to uh, cut a short piece and you want to solder the wires on, I, I cut and slice. De depending on how you're going to mount it, I'm going to mount mine straight down. So I decided to cut the thinnest part, the bottom, and go ahead and cut it enough to, to roll this the little flexible traces out. And you can actually get to those pads to solder a lot better. I noticed trying to cut corners and, um, and reach in with the soldering iron, I was blackening up the silicone. The silicone was melting onto my iron tip. So I'm just actually going to make sure I get it easily uh, accessible here I can actually get to this a lot better I'm gonna take time to put a little bit of rosin flux on here just a drop and help that solder stick I'm just gonna wipe it on there and if you can see that that's got the solder on the pads and the other thing uh, to point out is at least on mine the positive is always towards the lighted edge it's not always very easy to tell So there we go, we're connected up. And then we can just fold that back in. So back now we're just a quick test of the sectional pieces. I did try hot melt glue. It didn't really stick to the silicone that well. Super glue will work and I'll probably have to super glue these pieces that have the, the curved memory to them. They want to keep curving. Just some carpet uh, double back tape, the really sticky stuff just helps temporarily for testing. And then on the S, I actually had the drill and pin. I just put some little roll pins to keep my S shape because there's just no way um, without super gluing and clamping it. I just put four different roll pins to keep this in place. And this roll pin here should have been down a little further. It been a better looking S. But for now, it's fine just for testing. I mounted it to a substrate that I got out of an old industrial uh, touch screen just being thrifty i try to keep anything i can think of i come across a piece of acrylic especially with a nice grid diffuser built in i definitely kept it so i've had them for years and it's pretty nice looking neon style light and honestly i could take this and vary it and i get even more of a neon glow the camera exaggerates that a little bit so if i can get this closer is any better or not With my eyes, that's just got a nice neon glow to it there. I'll see if I can get a little bit better image of it and put it up at least in a secondary display there. And by the way, this small sign at 12 volt is pulling about 380 milliamps. So we're still less than 0.4 amps. So these are three inches each section. This one is actually eight inches. So all together, we have around 20 inches of linear LED string here. So that gives us roughly about 20 milliamps per inch. So I just got a small thrifty tool shed neon sign here. And TTS could also stand for being thankful for what we have, being thrifty with it and sharing what you learned. So if you like this video today looking at these neon style LED strips, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.